Shoemakers, welcome to this week's episode of our Ready Steady Review Show, where each week Rich reviews something and tells us whether we should watch it or not, and I recommend my top three movies, documentaries, and TV series. Check it. What is happening, fans of the show? It's time for a mini review, and this week I'm reviewing Godzilla vs. Kong. So, it's the ultimate monster mashup. It's a big lizard versus a big monkey man. What's the plot? There really isn't one. It's a big lizard versus a big monkey man. What happens? They fight. And that's kind of it. Is it good? Yeah, I loved it. Is it really good? Nah, but who cares? <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's basically it. There are human characters in this film. You've got me, Bobby Brown. You've got uh, Alexander Skarsgård. You've got this cute death girl. And they're kind of all together to get the monsters to fight. And that's the purpose they serve. Now, if you remember the films before this one, you had Godzilla, Godzilla King of the Monsters, Skong, Kong Skull Island, and then this. Uh, they were kind of set in the real world. It was sort of about how do real people and society deal with these horrible things happening. In this film, that's all out the window. We've got full-blown science fiction madness. We've got giant robots. We've got spaceships flying around. Underground tunnels that go from San Francisco to Hong Kong or something like that. Who knows? Who cares? There's monsters fighting. Bosh. Um, listen, man. This is a ridiculous movie. The main protagonist of this film is King Kong. And does he work as a protagonist? Yeah. Kong's amazing in this. He's sympathetic. You care about him. Uh, spoiler alert. The fucker sign language is in this. Also, spoiler alert. Kong fights with an axe. It's amazing. Um, Godzilla in this. Less of a character. More of just a force of nature. And I think it is a spoiler. But I'm going to go with it. At one point, they kind of team up to lay the smack down on something else. I won't tell you what else. But yeah, if you're a Godzilla fan, it's uh, hitting some of those nostalgia buttons. Listen, man, I really like this film. I can't lie. I really enjoyed it. And apparently so did a lot of other people. Uh, it might be the spark that's reignited cinema again after the coronavirus. This has been number one at the box office for, I think, two, three weeks, something like that. It's made a butt ton of money. So fingers crossed, this could be it. Cinemas might be back again. Um, I recommend it. Go watch Godzilla vs. Kong. It's really, really fun. Like I said, Kong has an axe. Um, also, it sets up a sequel, which um, might mean that they fight aliens, which I'm all up for. Listen, this is nonsense. <laughs> It's like when I saw Jurassic World. I mean, was it a good film? No. Did I love every second of it? Yes. This is the same. It's garbage. Turn your mind off. Watch it and enjoy a big monkey fist. Punch a big lizard snout. Um, also, Millie Bobby Brown and Ricky Baker. Their stuff's just all kind of boring. There's something provoking into war. All the Kong stuff, though. Cool. Yeah, that's it. I know it's a quick one, but what are you going to do? Godzilla vs. Kong, Rich Kelly recommendation. Bosh. So the first up of the recommendations for Tomo's top three, it's a movie called Palm Springs. Nice. This film is a really sweet, quirky, charming, gorgeous little number. So if you want something light-hearted, something genuinely funny, and something a bit like, ah, oh, what's happening? But you know what's gonna happen. It's a bit predictable, but we all have a lovely time while we're watching it. This is the film for you. It's got the guy from Brooklyn Nine-Nine in. He's in it, he's the main guy, he's super funny, very dry, very witty. Opposite, a girl, Kristen Milliotti, who's in Wolf of Wall Street. They're amazing, chemistry on screen is tip top. It's kinda like Bill Murray's Groundhog Day. 
these two are trapped in a bit of a time loop, but it all takes place on the day of a wedding. So they are reliving this day over and over and over and over again. But they're not just doing the wedding, they're doing some crazy stuff. And it's all about their relationship that kind of evolves. And someone else who's in it is J.K. Simmons. Not, not quite my tempo. But yeah, if you're looking for something chilled, something lighthearted, something funny, check out Palm Springs. So my number two recommendation, I'm going with a TV series called too close. New forensic psychiatrist. Oh, don't you sound pleased with yourself. Which is on ITV Catch Up at the moment. I've only watched the first episode and I am hooked. It's so good. It's very, it's very dark. It's very like twisty and turny. It's basically a psychological thriller starring Emily Watson, who as usual is just mwah. She's amazing. She plays a forensic psychiatrist and she's investigating crime of this woman played by Denise. Very good. She's also really good. Um, but yeah, basically, opening shot, not, not a spoiler, she's driving a car and she crashes it into the river with her two daughters or a kid. I can't remember if it's a girl or a boy. But she claims she cannot remember doing it or why she did it. And it's all about the interviews and the conversations to trying to get to the bottom of what the hell happened. If you want a bit of a ooh and a bit of a ah, check out Too Close on ITV. My final third recommendation for this week's show, it is a documentary on Netflix and it's called Why Did You Kill Me? Belinda was just kind of a psycho. It's not one of the best crime documentaries out there but it's quite interesting so if you're struggling to search for something give it a watch basically without giving too much away someone's been killed this girl's been killed however the family take it into their own hands to try and catch the killer and they do it through myspace remember myspace okay so they all hit myspace and the youngest daughter or cousin i can't remember who she is basically sets up a fake account making someone fall in love with someone who's dead is not a good feeling inside and starts chatting to these fellas who they think in the area who could possibly be the murderer but they become slightly obsessed and the mum she's nuts she's off her head she's like hooked on all sorts of meth and she goes crazy and she at one point she arranges for like a party as this young girl for them all to to come and she said i'm just gonna go and shoot them all about the battle between the police and the family about trying to track down who the hell murdered this poor young girl it's not amazing but it's just a bit it's one of those late night let's give it a watch so yeah that's it thank you for tuning in if you did if you didn't don't worry about it, the sun's shining. Have a lovely time in a beer garden. Yes. But if you can, please share this far and wide. Send in your reviews, your recommendations. We'll share them on our Instagram, our Twitter, Facebook. And make sure to not miss out on next week's Ready Steady remake show. It's going to be Cool Runnings.